Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy with another Fireside Science Chat. Today we're going to have a look at another video from my friend Taboo Conspiracy. I've looked at a few of his videos in the past, including his fake F-16 pilot, and his star videos from a commercial airliner. After getting burned twice, he's come back for a third time with this beauty. So without further ado, let's go over to Taboo Conspiracy and his world record LoRa transmission. This is another world record proof of the flat earth. This evidence alone ends the globe. The world record comes from this website called The Things Network. I'll have a link in the description. As the title states, this was a LoRa radio transmission at a whopping distance of 830 miles or 1,336 kilometers. LoRa is in the ultra high frequency UHF radio bandwidth. It is important to note that UHF does not even allegedly bend with the curvature of the earth. In fact, according to this website, LoRa is line of sight. Radio waves in the 400 to 900 megahertz range may pass through some obstructions, depending on their composition, but will be absorbed or reflected otherwise. This means that the signal can potentially reach as far as the horizon, as long as there are no physical barriers to block it. But this world record LoRa communication was at a distance of 830 miles. What makes this even more remarkable is that the LoRa WAN trackers were placed on a fishing boat and a buoy. Here are the pictures. This world record communication occurred at almost sea level. At only 20 feet, the signal from the boat should have been blocked by the supposed Earth's bulge at around 5.5 miles. There is only one reasonable conclusion. The Earth has no curvature. The Earth is flat. Okay, so let's summarize Taboo Conspiracy's argument. Laura is a low-powered radio that is line of sight, does not bounce over the curve of the Earth, and therefore can only reach the horizon on a spherical Earth. Since this radio transmission went 830 miles, the Earth, by definition, cannot be spherical. It must be flat. Or is it? Let's actually apply some critical thinking and find out. Now here's the page that Taboo is referring to. Uh, the new LoRa world record, 1336 kilometers, 830 miles. Now notice that it says LoRa right here. However, let's look at the first sentence of the article. The long-term LoRa WAN distance world record of 832 kilometers, 517 miles has been broken. Now, what is LoRa and what do we have to compare it to? Well, LoRa is a UHF radio transmitter that is attached to a sensor or some sort of a device to transmit a limited amount of data from that device to uh, another place where it can be analyzed. Uh, for example, they would use it for cattle tracking. They'd use it to measure the temperature, flow rate, and pressure in the, in the pumps of an oil refinery. The advantage is, is that you don't have to actually hardwire these sensors into some sort of a network. It's done by radio. Now, we're all familiar with something very similar to this, and that is Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a UHF radio transmitter that transmits small amounts of data over short distances, about 10 meters. So, for example, out in my observatory, I have a telescope, uh, and that transmits a wireless signal to the computer in the observatory and I can actually run the telescope without having a physical wire from the computer to the telescope. Now that's very convenient because it cuts down on the amount of wire snags. So you see the advantage of doing this by radio. And my house is more than 10 meters away from my observatory. So I can't use Bluetooth from inside my house out to the observatory and read the, read the data off of the telescope. However, what I can do is I can read the data off the telescope from a computer in the observatory, and then I use something called Chrome Remote Desktop to actually connect to the computer in the observatory from a computer in my house. And that way I can actually run the observatory from inside my house without having to sit out in the snow. Now, very clearly, you can read new LoRa world record, 1336 kilometers, 830 miles. And that is the headline of the page, and apparently that's as far as Taboo Conspiracy got. 
Now this is what's called copywriting. Now what copywriting is, is you like to write a headline that has some punch to it and makes people interested in the article. So if you're exploring Laura, you may want to actually look at this article because it kind of addresses some of your concerns and that's the range of the device. So let's look a little further into the article. So even though it says new Laura world record, let's look at the actual first sentence of the article right above the map. The new long-term Laura land distance record of 832 kilometers, 517 miles has been broken. And again down here, it also talks specifically about Laura WAN trackers on the fishing boat. So let's go ahead and have a look at the differences between Laura and Laura WAN, and we'll go right to the company website to learn about it. Now here's the architecture of the Laura WAN system. So we have end nodes right here. These are the Laura radios themselves. So for example, you could have a pet tracker or you could um, monitor the contents of a vending machine. Those send out a radio signal, line of sight, to something called a gateway. These would be the sensors on my telescope, and this would be the computer in my observatory. Those signals are then sent to the cloud, i.e. the internet. And then they are sent out and received on the other end where they have an application server, which would be my computer in the house. So I can, I can sit at my computer here, and then I can read the data off of the sensors down here via this network. And as you look at the Things Network webpage, you can see these black dots are LoRa WAN servers all over the globe. And you notice the nice globe Earth here. So basically, fishing boats off the coast of Florida would hit the sensors in Florida, and they could be transmitted to a sensor in Portugal. But the question is, what is the actual range of a LoRa transmitter? Well, it's a relatively low power line of sight radio, but as long as you have line of sight, you can generally receive a signal if you have a good enough antenna. For example, my ham radio, I can bounce signals off of the moon a quarter of a million miles away with less than a thousand watts of transmitting power, sometimes considerably less if I'm using Morse code. But what is the true world record for direct transmission from a LoRa transmitter to a LoRa receiver? Well, that information is actually in a link that Taboo Conspiracy put in the description of his video. Apparently, he didn't look at it. So this is the second reference that was in the description of Taboo Conspiracy's video. Uh, I don't believe he looked at it, so let's go ahead and we'll look at it for him. And it's from Electronic Design, and it's 11 myths about Laura Wan. Now, if you go right down here, it talks a little bit about what Laura Wan is and what Laura is, and it says very specifically that Laura signals cannot be transmitted over about 10 kilometers. Why is that? Well, it's line of sight, and in an urban environment with large amounts of obstructions, you're going to get 2 to 3 kilometers range. But in a rural area, you can get five to seven. And then it also goes on to talk about elevating the LoRa devices and placing them on rooftops or mountaintops, or the receivers for that matter, will maximize their range. And then specifically, it talks about this 702 kilometer direct transmission from a LoRa transmitter. So let's have a look at that a little closer. So this is a groundbreaking world record Laura Wan packet received at 702 kilometers. Well, how did they do this? Well, let's go ahead and read the article. And again, it's from the Things Network. They put the transmitter on a sounding balloon filled with helium and then sent it up to 38.772 kilometers or 24 miles. At that height, a single packet was sent from the node and received by 148 different gateways connected to the Things Network. One of the gateways reached during the flight was located in Poland. And then it has some information about the gateway that was in Poland that received it, its height, etc. And they used that to get a very good Google Earth measurement of the distance between the two points. And it was 702.676 kilometers. Well, how do we explain that? Well, as I said earlier, a relatively low power radio transmitter such as myself can bounce a signal off the moon a quarter of a million miles away. LoRa is a line of sight radio. If you have line of sight, 
even at a low transmission, if you have a good enough antenna on the other end, you should be able to pick it up. So it's not just a function of the power of the transmitter, it is also related to the sensitivity of the antenna and the amplifier on the receiving end. So let's go ahead and go over to Walter Bisland's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator, and let's go see where the horizon would be from 38.772 kilometers. So here we are at Walter Bisland's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator. We've got our altitude of 38,772 meters, and we have our target distance of 702. 676 meters. I think he actually said it was 20, 20 meters high. So we'll put in 20. We have zero refraction, although radio waves actually refract a little bit more than visible light waves, and that is due to the uh, moisture in the atmosphere and the frequency of the radio waves. But let's go see what we have. Well, at 702.676 kilometers, 19.8049 meters of our 20 meter object is visible. Just the very bottom of it is missing. So as you can clearly see, it is very easy to see that object from that distance. So as we can see, the distance of the horizon on the surface is a little bit over 701 kilometers and the distance from the eye is a little more than 703 kilometers. So once again, the line of sight is verified at 702 kilometers from that height. Now looking at the actual article that he posted, there seems to be a little bit of confusion as to whether or not the fishing boat, which apparently was off the coast of Portugal, reached that Canary Island node directly, or it reached it via a node in Portugal. But given all available information on the system and previous world records, I would say that it's very likely that it did not go directly to the node in the Canary Islands, but the data off the fishing boat in Portugal was received in the Canary Islands via the Laura WAN system. Now when you read the article itself, you see the tracker is named, and here is the information page on the tracker itself. And what I found of note is that the board also transmits and receives data configurations and events to and from the cloud over the LoRaWAN network. So in other words, this device actually connects to the cloud itself. And it may do that via satellite or some other means. So this was not a direct line of sight transmission. So let's go ahead and summarize all this up. Now, once again, we've got Taboo Conspiracy putting out a sensational video that is literally eaten up by the Flat Earth community. Let's go over the five characteristics of science denial according to Dr. Lee McIntyre. Number one, cherry picking. Clearly, Taboo Conspiracy just read the headlines and didn't read the body of the article at all. Number two is conspiratorial thinking. And Flat Earth itself is a conspiracy, so by definition, conspiratorial thinking is present. Number three is promotion of fake experts over real experts. Taboo Conspiracy clearly has demonstrated himself to be a false expert and he's ignoring the actual experts that wrote the articles that he's citing. Number four is poor scientific logic, and that kind of goes without saying. And number five is an inappropriate expectation of perfection from science, and he did not really touch on that in this episode. Once again, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and visiting with me this evening. Uh, we'll have another little chat sometime soon. And remember, all flat earthers are dishonest, if only to themselves. Take care, guys.